The rain was falling heavily at midnight. Della woke up to close her windows that she had forgotten to close. While she was trying to close her window, she heard some interactions outside. Let's just kill this man and leave before someone sees us, said a guy wearing a black hoodie. Scorpion, don't stab this man. Remember our boss said we should kill him painfully. We've already drugged him, so let's tie his legs, hands and mouth and throw him inside this big drainage so that the erosion would carry him away, replied the other. Della was extremely shocked when she heard that. She wanted to scream from where she was upstairs, but she was too scared to scream. They brought the guy out of the vehicle, and she was watching them from her window as the rain kept falling heavily. They tied his hands, legs and mouth, and they threw him inside the big drainage and drove away. So Della, a compassionate and very emotional lady, sneaked out of the house while everybody was asleep to save the guy's life. When Della got to the place that they threw him, she brought out her torchlight and pointed at the drainage. But she couldn't find him. She tiptoed a bit forward. Still in search, she suddenly saw this handsome guy wearing an expensive African outfit inside the drainage, shivering. She quickly rushed inside the drainage to bring him out, but couldn't lift him because of his weight. She hastily ran back upstairs to her brother's room and persuaded him to come and help her, so he followed her. They struggled so hard to bring him out of the drainage. When they eventually did, they hurriedly took him to a nearby hospital very close to their house because he was extremely feeble and weak. When they got to the hospital, they met nurses and doctors who were on duty that midnight. What happened to him? The doctor asked. Teller explained everything clearly to the doctor. The doctor conducted some tests on him. Doctor, please, is he okay? Her brother asked with teary eyes. Yes, he would be okay, but he would have passed away, assuming you people didn't bring him here on time, the doctor replied. Please, Ivan, go back to the house, in case mum and dad wake up and start searching for us, so you can explain to them the incident we just encountered. Della said, Sister Della, I am going nowhere this night. I will stay here till day dawn. I can't leave you here all alone, Ivan said. Ah, uh, please, I beg you in the name of God. Go back to the house before our parents start looking for us. Della begged. Della, I feel so terrified. I can't go home now, it's very late. What would you tell our parents if I got kidnapped or attacked on my way home? Ivan asked. You're right. But I am afraid our parents might look for us, and we did not come out with our phones or any means of communication, Della said. Sister, I understand, but don't worry. When we get home, we will explain to them, Ivan said. Around 6 a.m., their parents began to look for them, but they were still at the hospital with the straying man. Honey, did you see Ivan and Della this morning? Mrs. Steve asked. Not at all. I haven't set my eyes on them this morning. Have you called Bob to find out whether they went to visit him this morning? Mr. Steve asked. I have called him. What did he say? Mr. Steve asked. He said he hadn't seen them this morning. My God, where could Ivan and Della have gone to this morning? Mr. Steve murmured. A moment later, Scorpion how was last night's job? Dan asked. Boss, the job was successful. Your brother is dead. Where did you guys keep his body? Dan asked. Boss, nothing to fear. We gave him a slow, painful death as you instructed, Scorpion replied. Nice one, boys. I hope no one saw you guys. Not at all, boss. No one saw us. Good job. I am sending you boys additional 500k for a job well done. But where is my car? He asked. We're on our way to return your car, boss. Nice doing business with you, boss. Scorpion replied and ended the call. 
No one can take what rightfully belongs to me, Dan said. His parents, the king and the queen, barged into his room. Dan, whom were you talking to? They asked. Um, um, my friend, he replied. Who is trying to take what rightfully belongs to you? The king asked suspiciously. Nobody, Dad. I was just having fun with my friend on the phone. Your Majesty, this was not why we came to his room, the Queen said. Dan, have you heard from Obi? We have been calling him since yesterday. But his numbers are not reachable, the King asked. Daddy, I haven't heard from him either. I called his numbers countless times, but they are not reachable, Dan responded. What could have happened to my son? He told us he would land at the airport yesterday evening, the Queen murmured. Mummy, I don't know what's going on with my brother. I waited for him at the airport yesterday evening for almost six hours, but up till now he hasn't arrived. I'm very confused and sad right now, Dan said. I strongly believe that my son is okay wherever he is now, the King said. I am so worried, my king, said the queen. Your majesty, your highness, my prince, breakfast is ready, said the maiden. Nothing to fear, my queen, let's go and have our breakfast, the king said. A few hours later, back at the hospital. Doctor, please, why is he talking and behaving abnormally? Della curiously asked. They gave this man a very dangerous substance and that substance has damaged his brain completely. You people should quickly take him to a psychiatric hospital because this looks like a pure mental case. Della and Ivan took him to the mental hospital. When they got there, Ivan went home and explained everything to their parents, and their parents were extremely stunned. A few days to Della's wedding. Babe, what's going on? Why the sudden change? Della's fiancé, Bob, asked. Bob, I don't understand what you are talking about. How did I change, if I may ask? Della asked. Della, ever since you started taking care of that common madman, you no longer pick up my calls as usual. You scarcely give me your time and attention. Della, have you suddenly forgotten that our wedding is in a few weeks? Bob asked. Bob, it's not my fault, please. Della muttered. Then whose fault? Or is it my fault? Della, answer me now. Bob yelled at her with aggression. Bob, please stop yelling at me. I just told you it's not my fault. Bob, with the way things are going every day and this aggression of yours, I don't think that our marriage would work out because... Della, what did I just hear you say? Bob, I am so stressed at the moment. I am taking care of a complete stranger who the doctor says is marred, and he is stuck with me. Because there is nothing on him to trace where he is from. No phone, no ID, and instead of you soothing my tension, you are here screaming at me, Della exclaimed. Della, is that the stupid reason why you say our marriage can't work? Are you insane? said Bob aggressively. Bob. I don't know where to start to make you understand. I am very confused right now. Oh, God, why me? Della exclaimed. With a little calm in his voice, Please, my love, talk to me. What's the problem? Bob asked sadly. She sadly stared at Bob, and tears were gushing out from her eyes. Babe, why are you crying? Please tell me because you're hurting me. Bob, I am very sorry. I have completely lost my feelings for you. I don't have the slightest feeling for you any longer. I don't know if what I felt for you was true love or because of what you do for me and my family, said Della. How? Della, I don't understand what you are talking about. Can you repeat what you just said? Bob, please believe me. I don't think I have any feelings for you. I seem to be obsessed with this madman. 
the emotions I feel towards this madman are surprisingly uncontrollable and mysterious. I can't call it love, but I can't just control my feelings for him, Della exclaimed. Della, what are you saying? Have you suddenly gone mad? Have you forgotten that our wedding is in a few weeks Saturday? You're joking, oh yes, you're joking. Bob, I swear with my life, I mean what I just told you. Ever since I saw that strange madman, my spirit and soul have not been the same as before. The deep feelings I have for him are just beyond my control. I sense there is a deep mystery behind this man. I have never been so emotionally attached to a person like this in my life, or maybe it's because I have a fragile heart. I can't just help myself out. I don't know what I will do at this point to get rid of my feelings for him because these circumstances are beyond me. Della cried out heavily. Della, are you going insane or what? Why are you saying gibberish? So this is how you want to pay me back for all the good things I have done for you and your family? I relocated you and your family from a village to this city and rented a well-furnished house for you and your family because of the love I have for you. Today you have the guts to open your mouth to tell me that you no longer have feelings for me, that you are in love with that stinky, strange madman that you know nothing about. Della, are you listening to yourself talk? said Bob. Bob, I am deeply sorry to betray you this way. Please, it's not my fault. I tried my best to control my feelings for the madman, but the feelings are beyond my control. Della, if I hear you saying that feeling again, I will strangle you right now. Della, what's wrong with you? Our wedding is a few weeks away and you're telling me you're deeply in love with a madman whom you don't know anything about. Della, are you mad, eh? Do you know I can just kill you right now and nothing will happen? I feel like tearing you into pieces right now, says Bob with deep anger. Bob, leave my neck. What have I done to you that you want to kill me before my time? Della, you don't know what you have done, Abby. You must be very stupid for asking me that question. As Bob leaves her neck, Bob, please, I am very sorry to hurt you. I understand how you feel right now, and I also don't want to lose you. You've proven to me beyond a reasonable doubt that you truly care about me, and especially my family. So please, what do you want me to do at this juncture to let the sleeping dog lie and to make you happy? Because I am extremely confused right now, said Della. Della found it difficult to identify if Bob was truly in love with her or obsessed. She also was a little confused about what she felt for Bob. She doubted her love for Bob as he struggled with her inner voice asking her if she truly loved Bob or she was compelled by the money Bob has spent on her and her family. Bob couldn't utter a word. He was just staring at Della with teary eyes. Remembering all the good things Bob has done for her and her family, and what her family stands to lose if she does not marry Bob, Della said, Bob, please talk to me. I am willing to do and sacrifice anything for your happiness. Bob, say something, please. Della, if you truly want me to be happy and peace to reign, you will have to kill the madman, said Bob sternly. Jesus Christ, Della screamed. Oh yes, you must kill him because he's our biggest problem right now. And the only solution is for you to terminate him out of our ways, Bob said. God forbid, I will never do that. It hasn't gotten to that extent. Why would you advise me to kill the innocent poor madman. Bob, are you this wicked? Della, see I can't fold my arms and see a madman take you away from me. So you've to kill him before everything is out of control, Bob said. Bob, I am very sorry. I will never attempt to kill the innocent madman. I can't even kill an ordinary chicken, let alone kill a human being like me. God forbid I will never do that. Della, it's crystal clear that you never love me. That's why you are doing all these things to me. 
I just regretted the very first day I met you. Bob lamented. Bob, please stop this because you're hurting me. I was extremely in love with you, and that was why I was eager. We get married, I was desperate to be your wife and to spend the rest of my life with you. But everything suddenly changed when I met the strange madman. Bob, I am extremely sorry to break your heart and to severely hurt your feelings. But I think we were not destined to be together as husband and wife because life is full of mystery. Bob, please, let's not ruin our life and destiny because of what we feel is love. Della, keep your useless apologies to yourself. Della, no man born of a woman would take you away from me, not when I am still alive. And let me tell you, if you don't kill that madman, I will kill you and kill myself too. Bob responded and walked away. Bob, are you walking away from me like that? Please come back. As Della holds him by the hand. Della, don't just touch me. I hate you. You're very wicked and heartless. Leave my hand and get out of my way. Betrayal, Bob yelled. Oh God, what have I gotten myself into? I am finished. What will I do now? I need to talk to someone to be sure I am not going crazy. Let me go and meet Anita now. A moment later, the King's Palace. Your Majesty, it's been days since we've been waiting for the arrival of Obi, and just two days to his coronation. So where is our heir? The Prime Minister Ono asked. Ono, Obi is nowhere to be found, but police officers are doing their job. I believe they will return to the palace with good news, the King replied. They should better return to the palace with our heir because our people are seriously worried, the king's cabinet said. While they were conversing, Dan drove into the palace, sat on the ground, and began to scream fakely. Er, ee. It's finished, ooh. Who did my brother offend, ooh? Is that not Prince Dan's voice I am hearing? the Prime Minister asked. They all rushed out to see what happened to Dan. My prince, my prince, my prince, what happened? They asked. My brother, ooh, Dan cried out fakely. What happened to my son? The queen and king curiously asked. I, 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 Dan stammered. Please, my son, talk to us. What happened to our son, the prince? The queen pleaded. I got a shocking call on my way returning to the palace that my brother Obi died in a car crash days ago. Dan responded. What? My son, what? Please, my son, repeat what you just said because I didn't hear you, the Queen said. Mother, Obi is dead. He died in the car crash. Oh, no, I can't take this. Hmm. The King moaned and slumped. Your Majesty. Your Majesty. Guard! Dan screamed. Please, let's swiftly rush him to the hospital, the Prime Minister said. And while they were trying to put the King in the vehicle, the Queen, too, slumped, because Obi was everything to them. They invested so much in Obi, unlike Dan. Obi was super intelligent, responsible, respectful, meek, very disciplined, influential, and highly respected, while Dan was very arrogant, proud, and irresponsible. So they rushed the two of them to a nearby hospital for urgent treatment, back to Della after arriving at Anita's home. Anita, you're the only trusted and reliable friend I have in this life. I believe you are aware of the circumstances Bob and I are facing currently because of this strange madman, Della said. Yes, I know. So what do you want me to do or what are your plans? Anita asked. I need your help right now because I am in deep confusion. Bob told me to kill the madman and I don't want to do that, Della murmured. Della, what's wrong with you? Why are you always behaving childishly? Anita asked. Anita, I don't understand what you are talking about. Della, you and I know how much Bob has invested in you and your family. He has proven to you numerous times that he truly loves you. So what's there for you to kill the madman? Anita, I know, but I can't just kill the poor madman. 
Della, what do you intend to do with the madman? Because I don't understand you at all, Anita asked. Anita, I don't know. That's the question I keep on asking myself every blessed day. But I think I am surprisingly madly emotional with this madman. And maybe I am having deep feelings for him too, Della muttered. Della, you're the funniest girl I have ever seen. Della, let me tell you, if you lose Bob because of your stupidity, I swear you will weep and regret for the rest of your life. The earlier you kill the madman, the better for you. And don't forget, your wedding is in a few weeks. Anita, I will think about it, thank you. Think of... Uh, Della, it's very easy to kill the madman. He's mad and worthless. He's like an obstacle to you. So just clear him out of your way to greatness before he ruins your destiny. When Della got home, she began to recall all the beautiful moments she and Bob had shared. And she also reminisced on all the amazing things Bob had done for her and her family. She eventually made up her mind to kill the madman. Thereafter, she went to Bob's house and told him that she was ready to kill the madman. Bob became extremely happy with her. Bob, I will kill the madman, Della said. My love, are you serious? Bob asked. Yes, I am pretty serious. I have made up my mind to kill him. So please enlighten me on what to do right now before I change my mind again. Della said, Thank you very much, baby. I am transferring you 10k right now to your Opay account. Use it and cook the madman's favorite food. I believe before you are done cooking, I will bring you a poisonous substance to put in the food and his drinking water before you give him, Bob said. Okay, but that would be in the evening, not this morning, so that when he eats it, he would sleep and never wake up, Della said. You're very smart. That's a wise plan, but I will make the substance available before then. Okay, are you still traveling to the city tomorrow? Della asked. Pretty sure. So what do you want me to buy for you? Anything of your choice, Bob. Don't worry, I will surprise you beyond your expectations when you terminate the madman. Bob, I am willing to sacrifice anything for our love. I believe when the madman dies, the weird feelings and love I have for him would surely die. I will never ruin our relationship because we've gone extremely far. Bob, I am off to my shop. Don't forget to bring the substance to my shop, Della said. Bob became extremely happy. He couldn't control himself because of overjoy and happiness. A few hours later, at the hospital, they discharged the Queen. Doctor, please, have you been able to figure out what's wrong with the King? Because it's been five days now since we brought him here, and you haven't told us what's wrong with him, the Prime Minister Ono asked. Sir, we've conducted several tests but there is no iota of sickness in his system, so there is nothing medically wrong with him, the doctor responded. The this is strange. My queen, I think this is high time to take the king to India for a medical checkup, the prime minister suggested. Oh no, I agree with you, I thought of this lately. I will inform our Indian doctors in India that we're bringing the king to India any time soon. The Queen said. Mum, my father is not going anywhere. If he wants to die, let him die. He's old enough to die, Dan replied arrogantly. Prince Dan, have you suddenly forgotten who your father is? Don't you know if the King dies in this state, without knowing exactly what killed him, there will be big problems in this kingdom? The Prime Minister asked. Oh no, my father is old so there is no need to waste money and resources on him, Dan responded. Dan, how dare you talk to your father in that manner? Are you mad? The Queen slaps his face. Mother, did you just slap me? Dan asked, rubbing his cheek. Dan, I will slap you again and again if you don't behave like the High Prince and heir that you are, the Queen said. Dan, will will n me Verbi my, my successor, the king muttered. 
Oh, Your Majesty, you're awake? The Queen and the Prime Minister asked. Dan squeezed his face and angrily left the hospital because all his prayers were for the king to die so that they would crown him as king. Five hours later, Della came back from work with food items and the poisonous substance that she collected from Bob, and she began to prepare the food. After she finished, she packed the madman's food in a food flask and put the poison in the food and water. After she finished everything, she had her bath and dressed up. Thereafter, she carried the poisonous food to go and give the madman. When she got to their parlour, she got a video call from Bob, so she sat on the couch in the parlour to answer the call. Good evening, babe. How far our plan? Did you give him the food? Bob asked. I am about to go to his place right now. Did you put the poison very well? Yes, in fact, I put all the substance, Della replied. My love, I am proud of you. When you come back, do not hesitate to call me, please. I will not hesitate. I love you, Bob. I love you more and more, baby, Bob replied and ended the call. After the call ended, Della began to reply to some of her WhatsApp messages. While she was typing, she dozed off and had a strange dream. In that dream, she saw the madman dressing like a very wealthy and famous king, and he was sitting on a golden throne. She was extremely stunned to see how kings, governors, senators, traditional rulers, and other top leaders honored the madman in the dream. She was standing outside the gate, and when she wanted to go inside, Bob held her tightly from behind and attempted to stop her from entering. Leave me! Let me go inside! Della screamed. No, you don't belong here. Let's go home, Bob replied. No, I can't go with you. Leave me. Let me go. While they were dragging in the dream, the gateman came out to close the gate, and when he wanted to shut the gate, Della bit Bob's hand painfully. Bob quickly left her, and she hastily rushed inside, and immediately after she entered the compound, she woke up. So it was all a dream. I don't think this madman is an ordinary person. There must be a deep mystery behind him. I will never give up on him. Bob, you can never fool me, Della said. Thereafter, she threw away the poisonous food and packed good food in another food flask to go give the madman. When she got to where the madman was staying, she began to ask the madman questions, but the madman didn't even bother to answer her. He was just busy laughing and eating his food. A few moments later, Bob started calling Della to find out whether the madman ate the poisonous food, but Della kept on ignoring his calls. The next morning, Bob went to Della's shop. Babe, what's going on? I have been calling your line since yesterday, but you kept on declining my calls. What is my offence? Bob asked. Honestly, I am fed up with you completely. I told you well and clearly that I am deeply in love with the madman, but you kept on persuading me to kill the innocent poor madman. If you could persuade me to kill the madman because I am obsessed with, that means you would also kill me when you find someone better than me. Bob, I am very sorry to say this. I am no longer interested in marrying you, so here is your engagement ring. I know how much you have spent. I am just tired of everything, Della said. Bob became extremely angry. He disclosed everything to Della's family and his. Della's family became extremely angry with Della. The two families summoned Della and Bob to resolve their issues. At the end of the meeting, Della still stood by her decisions regardless of all the advice. Eventually, their wedding and everything was cancelled. After the meeting, Della's parents threw Della out of the house because the house was rented by Bob. Bob seized Della's shop. He collected the phone and all the things he bought for Della, and Della was very much okay with her decisions. After they threw her out of the house, she went to another town and rented a self-contained for her and took the madman along 
and she decided to live under the same roof with the madman because both of them understood each other very well. One night, she was very horny and needed someone badly to sleep with her to quench her feelings. So when the feelings were beyond her control, she decided to seduce and sleep with the madman unashamedly without protection. A few weeks later, when Della discovered she was pregnant for the madman, she confided in Anita as he was contemplating keeping it or removing the pregnancy. Anita called Bob on the phone to tell him Della was pregnant for the madman. When Bob heard that Della was pregnant for the madman, he became as mad as a bear with a sour head and took Della's clothes and picture to a deadly shrine to kill Della with the pregnancy. Young man, what brought you to my shrine? The native doctor asked. Great one, this girl ruined my life and ran away so I want you to kill her, Bob said. Young man, drop the picture and the clothes here and call her name three times, the native doctor instructed. Della, 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 Bob called. Stop. Young man, are you aware this girl is pregnant? The native doctor asked. Yes, I am fully aware. Great one. That's what brought me here, Bob replied. Do you truly know the man who is responsible for the pregnancy? Yes, he's a poor, miserable madman, Bob responded. The native doctor stared at him, shook his head and laughed. Young man, I cannot kill this girl because that child she carries in her womb is untouchable, and there is no power in existence that can harm that child, the native doctor said. Great one, I don't understand what you're talking about, and besides, I didn't ask you to kill the child in her womb, but the girl. Young man, there are mysteries behind the madman and his family that you don't know. So that unborn child is not just an ordinary child, and there is no amount of charm I will do that would kill this girl because of the child she carries, the native doctor said. So great one, what should I do at this point? Because I want to deal with this girl, Bob asked. Young man, let me reveal deep mysteries to you. This girl you intended to kill was not destined to be your wife. The fact that you both were in love with each other doesn't guarantee that you both would end up together as husband and wife. So no matter what you do, she can never be your wife because she was assigned to marry that madman. And there is no amount of money or gold and silver that you would give her that would convince her to marry you. That girl is willing to sacrifice anything for that madman and she has vowed to leave no stone unturned until she marries the madman because of the dreams and visions she had concerning the madman, the native doctor said. This is getting out of hand, so wise one, what should I do now? I am baffled right now, Bob asked. Young man, let the girl and the madman be because if you continue to attack them, you might lose your life or ruin your glorious future. Let me tell you, young man, do you know you're destined to be a king of a great kingdom? The native doctor said. King? How? Bob asked. Yes, a king, I see a crown on your head, said the native doctor. But I am not from a royal family, so how is it possible that I will be a king? Bob asked. I agree with you that you're not from a royal family, but a royal family would come out from you. And the only and easiest way you can achieve this is by quickly giving up on this girl and the madman and making peace with them hastily because they are a road map to your glorious future and your greatness, the native doctor said. Eyes of the gods. I am very confused. I don't understand at all, please. Can you explain to me in a way I will understand? because I don't see how a poor madman can be a roadmap to my destiny, said Bob. You would understand when the time comes, and you would recall everything I told you today. But if after everything I reveal to you today, you continue to still fashion an attack on this girl and the madman, you will regret everything I told you today, either in prison or in a grave. You may leave, 
the native doctor said. Bob left the shrine confusingly, and when he got to his town, he disclosed everything to his friends. They all laughed at him. Guy, I hope you don't believe the falsehood that the native doctor told you, Felix said. Felix, I believe the man, but I am confused, Bob replied. Um, Bob, you're just too funny. How can you believe such a thing? The majority of all these native doctors are fake, and I believe you met one of them, Rex said. So, what do you guys want me to do now? Bob asked. Guy, eliminate that girl. She can't betray you and cause you severe pains and heartbreak, then go scot-free. So, you've to kill her with that pregnancy. Do you understand the magnitude of insult? That the love of your life left you to get pregnant for a madman? Rex said. Rex, I can't do that anymore because of what the native doctor said, Bob replied. Bob, forget about what the native doctor told you. He is fake. He doesn't see or know anything. As far as I am concerned, he is just using that shrine for business, Felix said. Felix, you are very correct. Bob, how can someone tell you that you will be a king and you believe? Rex asked, laughing. Guy, is that one that baffles me till this point? Because there is nothing like a king in my hometown. I don't believe that man. I think I will try another spiritualist, Bob said. But why can't you send some boys to kill Della instead of all this stress? Rex asked. Rex, that was my first plan. But the only problem I have is that I don't know where Della and the madman are staying. Where they are staying is unknown to everybody, Bob said. Bob, get ready. First thing tomorrow, I will take you to one of the mightiest goddesses in my grandmother's village, Felix said. Felix, I have heard a whole lot about that goddess, and I heard she's very powerful, Rex said. Yes, she's extremely powerful. She had lived in a river for over a thousand years. Felix, if you knew the goddess was that powerful, why didn't you take me to see her instead of that fake native doctor? Bob asked. Guy, it was because of the distance. So are you ready to go to the place tomorrow? Felix asked. I am fully ready, Bob responded. The next morning, they travelled to the village to see the mysterious goddess, and when they got there, Bob disclosed everything Della did to him to the goddess, and he eventually told the goddess to kill Della with the pregnancy. Thereafter, he dropped Della's clothes, picks and sacrificial items that Felix instructed him to buy. Your request cannot easily be granted because this soul is pregnant, and that blood she carries is protected by very strong, mysterious ancestral powers. But there is a way out, the goddess said. Queen Mother, what's the way out? I am willing to do anything, Bob asked. Sacrifice must be made to destroy that mysterious ancestral powers before the girl can be killed, the goddess replied. Queen Mother, what am I going to bring for the sacrifice? Bob asked. So the goddess told him what he would bring. Three days later, Bob went to the river with the sacrificial items, and after the goddess performed the sacrifices, she said, Go! Your sacrifice has been accepted, and your request has been granted. That ancestral power has been destroyed. The girl would die tonight. Thereafter, the goddess disappeared, Bob and his friends travelled back to their town. A few moments after they left, the goddess tried to kill Della countless times in her marine kingdom. But she didn't succeed because the child in Della's womb averted all the charms she sent to kill Della, and she was extremely frustrated and angry. At midnight, Della and the madman were sleeping deeply. The goddess appeared in the bed that Della was sleeping and transformed herself into a very old, ugly ghost, and she began to press and massage Della's stomach to destroy the child in her womb so that she would have a chance to kill Della. 
While the goddess was massaging and pressing Della's stomach, suddenly Della woke up. Write the word, continue in the comments section, if you want a part two, and please subscribe to our channel.